disasters are mostly unpredictable and we cannot really prevent the occurrence of any disaster but what is in our hands is the management of any disaster so amphan that took place in 2020 hit massive damage in eastern part of india particularly west bengal and orisha and also parts of bangladesh now the mitigation of the disaster was possible because of the prior alerts that were given by the international body of meteorological department of india so this was made possible and this led to the mitigation of disaster and the impact of disaster was reduced to a huge extent so what exactly is disaster management is what we learn in this lesson we need to first take a look at the definition of disaster management. So as per the International Federation of Red Cross, disaster management is the organization and the management of resources. Now these resources, their organization plays a very vital role or important role in the management of any disaster. How so? So while we are managing or we are considering the before and after event of any disaster, we need to have the ability to take up the responsibility of dealing with the humanitarian aspects of emergencies. And in particular, this may include the preparedness to respond and to recover so as to lessen the impact of disasters on people. So that you see along with a huge definition is also a huge task on the part of the disaster management team. So what did we understand? That disaster management is the organization and the management of resources in the times when a disaster strikes. Now in this people need to develop the capacity to respond and recover from the disaster. When people can do that then they can definitely lessen the impact of disaster that has taken place. So this was the definition of disaster management as per the International Federation of Red Cross. Now that we understood that disaster management is very important and we also took a look at the definition of disaster management. But how is it important and from where it draws its significance for that we need to take at certain points that will help us justify that disaster management is very important. So the first point that tells us the importance of disaster management is that disaster management helps in improving response management. So the first thing that we need to keep in mind when a disaster strikes is how we respond to any disaster. With disaster management, we'll have a proper knowledge as to how we can direct our responses in any such situation. So disaster management actually helps in mitigating the effects of any hazard and also reduce the long term negative effect of any disaster. So disaster management enables us to understand how we should react to any disaster so that loss of life and property could be minimized. The second point here is that it ensures lessons are learned. So disaster management makes people aware of the fact that the previous responses that they took to a certain disaster could actually be utilized. The knowledge of that previous response could actually be utilized for a better future response for any upcoming disaster. So we always say this that we should learn from our previous mistakes. So if a disaster strikes, the responses that we took in a certain situation is what need to be kept in mind. We need to utilize this knowledge so that our future responses to any upcoming disaster can be in a better situation. And that will only help us to mitigate the effect of any disaster efficiently. The third point says that it improves the management of resources. Now, as I mentioned, that resource allocation is very important when any disaster strikes. So in a disaster prone area where the affected community is present, there the allocation of resources is very important. We need to allocate resources in such a way that their effectiveness is maximized and there is no wastage. 
so once we understand how we should deploy the resources then we can effectively recover from the losses that we have incurred due to any disaster but we also need to keep in mind that a proper allocation of resources can only be possible when we have trained disaster management team so expertise is very important when we decide to deploy resources in such places disaster management also helps us in pre positioning the resources so whenever a disaster strikes the deployment of those resources to the affected community becomes much more easier and effective now the fourth point says that it saves lives now of course human life is very important and humans as we know is the most important resource on earth so disaster management efficiently helps in saving a lot of lives thus preventing a huge loss on the part of nature and on the human kind now disaster management also enables to encourage coordination between the actors right we know that whenever a disaster strikes communication and infrastructure is disrupted now in such a situation disaster management is one that puts together the system and processes so that the responders can actually coordinate now once a proper coordination is established between the responders or the actors in such a situation then the disaster management becomes much more easier or the recovery and response process to any disaster becomes much more easier Another important point is that disaster management also ensures effective liaison. Now what do we mean by effective liaison? It means that it helps the emergency services and the military responders to work in coordination with the NGOs, the civilians and the governmental agencies. So disaster management definitely helps in avoiding any kind of confusion. they help to connect all the actors of the situation so that resources are allocated properly in the right way to the right community and there is no haphazardness finally another important point that completes our justification on the importance of disaster management is it helps to coordinate disaster preparedness So we know that before any disaster strikes we need to be prepared for the disaster. Now why do we need to prepare ourselves for any disaster? This is only to lessen the impact of disaster on the affected community or on us for that matter. So preparing ourselves before any disaster strikes is the most important point and we also know that the first responders to any disaster is the affected community itself so they need to be made aware of how they can take precautionary measures and be prepared for any disaster right so that loss of life and property could be minimized so this plays a very important role as a factor that justifies the importance of disaster management so we see that disaster management has a lot of importance and this is why we should invest our time and energy in disaster management now let's see how does disaster management take place so the process of disaster management is not of only one step there are certain phases that together helps in the management of any disaster So the disaster management or the disaster management cycle includes four phases as we learned in a previous lesson that there are four phases to the disaster management cycle so the first phase is the prevention and mitigation phase prevention and mitigation is making people aware of the consequences causes or probable aftermaths of any disaster so that they can prepare themselves accordingly So prevention and mitigation is the first phase of any disaster management process. Now this may include individuals and families making evacuation plans. So people can make their own evacuation plan so that they can implement that whenever a disaster strikes. On the other hand at national and international level the governments too can play a role by taking up effective disaster management policies. Now on effective disaster management policies being taken up there can be proper measures that can be taken by the agencies or by the bodies who come into play when any disaster strikes other things that could be done in the first phase that is prevention and mitigation is the 
installation of shock absorbers at the base of buildings that can help us reduce the impact of earthquakes this is one of the things that we could do we could install in places that are prone to earthquakes right we learnt in our previous lesson how seismic zonation plays a very important role in mapping the earthquake prone areas to revise on that chapter you can simply click on the link below and access the i dictionary feature now moving on another thing that could be done is the building of embankments we know that there are many places that are prone to floods now to take care of that people can construct embankments that can safeguard the people and property from the floods and cyclones so these were certain points that we need to keep in mind when we are talking about the first phase of disaster management the second phase includes preparedness as i mentioned being prepared for any disaster is what we need to keep in mind and be very careful about as i just mentioned a while ago that the affected community is the first one to respond to any disaster and to justify this point i have a very famous proverb that all of us know about is that prevention is better than cure so being prepared is better than being directly hit by any disaster so some effective measures is the community shelters community shelters can be built by the authorities for any disaster people need to be made aware of the safe zones in their own towns and villages and there should be community shelters so that people can definitely be rehabilitated to such places or reshifted to such places when any disaster strikes another thing that could be done at our own homes is that the preparation or arrangement of emergency kits do you remember the 72 hour emergency or survival kit let's take a recap so the 72 hour survival kit is where we have all the important and basic things that can help us survive in any sort of disaster it may include whistle bottled water cell phone battery operated radio ready to eat food emergency money first aid kit important documents flashlight and clothes so these are the basic things that every survival kit should have and we should always be prepared with this especially those people who are living in any disaster prone area now the process of preparing ourselves for any disaster also includes the role of professionals in community during disaster so whenever a disaster is about to strike the role of professionals becomes very important now disaster management helps in increasing the capacity of the community to respond to any disaster the professionals who can help in training the community and the children to face any disaster may include people from local police stations from healthcare centers from schools and also other local people even international agencies or local agencies can play a role in training the community to be prepared for any disaster the third phase may include response and relief response and relief is what first comes to our mind so different agencies and different local authorities first come into play to rescue the people from the affected zone now this may include evacuating individuals from the site of disaster and providing basic necessities to the affected community so firstly we need to save lives we need to reduce or keep the loss of life at minimum and secondly people who have been rescued need to be given certain relief that is they need to be made available that is basic necessities like housing power supply food supply and water supply needs to be made available to the affected community so that they could survive in such a situation till they could be given permanent solutions or till they could be given permanent shelters and source of employment the fourth phase may include recovery now after people have been rescued and given certain relief the final phase is the recovery that is rebuilding their destroyed property and the destroyed resources so the recovery phase may involve the rebuilding of damaged houses schools hospitals roads 
and also providing the affected community with other basic necessities medical and educational facilities and help them recover from the losses that they have incurred you see that there are so many pictures that tell us how the recovery process could go on in any disaster situation now one of the examples of such situation is the work of the west bengal government now when amfan and yash hit west bengal the west bengal government also built new carts for the hawkers after the disaster was over or during the recovery phase so those were the four stages of the disaster management cycle so let's take a recap and point out some important facts of each of these phases first is the mitigation phase now the mitigation phase primarily includes the public education and awareness so people need to be first made aware so that mitigation of the hazard can be done and it also includes hazard and vulnerability assessment improved infrastructure so before any disaster strikes we need to have strong infrastructures so that they can bear the consequences of any disaster just like the installation of shock absorbers in earthquake prone areas under the buildings so that the buildings do not collapse that easily and there is prevention of loss of property and life the second phase is preparedness now the second phase may include strong telecommunication and response plans now response plans and telecommunication need to be made beforehand so that when a disaster strikes we know that infrastructure and and communication is disrupted now only to take care of that we need to already have an existing strong telecommunication and rescue plan other than that we also have standard operating procedures so that people can follow certain principles regarding the process in which they have to respond to any disaster so that there is no haphazard and all are in the same platform or on the same page of how they can respond to any disaster other than that we have training and exercise national emergency and early warnings as i mentioned in the very beginning the indian meteorological department issued prior warnings to the people which helped them to mitigate the impact of amfan in 2010 so now the third phase may include response phase this definitely includes saving lives and communication and coordination where we have to rebuild our communication and coordination so that people can be evacuated easily resources could be allocated properly to the affected community and people are not more vulnerable to further disasters finally the fourth phase is the recovery phase that includes rebuilding strong infrastructures improving lives establishing telecommunications recovery and rehabilitation of other services so these were the four phases of disaster management cycle now how do you think this was all possible was this present from the very beginning no to give a proper shape and to manage the entire process of disaster management the act of 2005 that is the disaster management act of 2005 established a special body called the national disaster management authority now the national disaster management authority of india is the body that decides on or plans all the policies or strategies as to how we should go about the management of any disaster and this was possible because of the disaster management act of 2005 now the meetings of ndma that is the national disaster authority of india is done in the presence of prime minister so the prime minister here in this picture we have mr narendra modi who is the prime minister of india who sits as the chairperson of every meeting of ndma so the ndma is chaired by the prime minister and the vice chairperson is the cabinet minister along with that we have eight other ministers from other states that helps in building strategies in collecting funds in reconstruction process and also in planning and implementing the important policies required for any disaster management process now the ndma first works with the community the community that is affected as they are the first responders other than that they also work with national and international bodies which help them or support them in the process of the management of any disaster these usually include the international federation of 
Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, the National Cadet Corps, the UNDRR, that is the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, and finally, the National Service Scheme. Now, the state responders or the state actors are the first one to help in the process of rescue, relief, and recovery. But besides that, it is the central government who acts as a major support or who supplements the efforts of the states by providing them with financial and logistic support, right? And this may usually include airplanes, boats, medical facilities and, and infrastructural facilities that acts as a big support for the state authorities to help their people or the affected community recover from the disaster. Now, there are certain government agencies or ministries who are deployed at national level for the management of disaster. Let us look at these ministries who have their respective areas or portfolios to look at. So, for any nuclear accident, we have the Department of Atomic Energy. For any air accident, we have the Ministry of Civil Aviation. Now, when there is any drought that has taken place, it is taken care by the Ministry of Agriculture. On the other hand, if there is a railway accident, the ministry that takes care of it is the Ministry of Railways. Now, on the other hand, we also have epidemics and biological disasters like the current pandemic of COVID-19. So, to take care of that, we have Ministry of health and family welfare and finally another important aspect that could take place is chemical or industrial disaster and to take care of that we have ministry of environment and forest so we see that each kind of disaster situation has a particular ministry or department to take care of this deployment of different departments for different disaster situation helps in proper or efficient working of the authorities that are given the responsibility to take care of the people who have been affected now the government of india has a special body that is ready for special responses to any disaster and this trained special body is the ndrf the NDRF is the National Disaster Reduction Forces. Now, this is a special body who is trained and is ready for any special or emergency response developed by the government of India. And they work in association with different NGOs so that the impact of any disaster is kept at minimum and that proper allocation of resources and relief is made to the affected community and people are also made aware of future responses for any disaster. So in this lesson, we were able to understand that people who are affected are the first responders of any disaster. So they need to be first aware of the precautionary measures and the probable preparedness measures that they could take before any disaster strikes. They also need to imbibe in themselves the way they could respond to any disaster and actively take part in such activities where the professionals come to train them for such disaster situation. So in this lesson, we were able to understand the importance of disaster management. We also understood the meaning and true nature of disaster management and saw how disaster management could definitely mitigate the effect of any hazard or disaster for that matter. In our next lesson, we'll be taking a look at certain case studies and see how disaster had had a huge impact on humankind so far. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.